Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room Channel. Well, I brought out my scraps because it's scrap buster time. So start going through your scraps because I've got some really fun five to 10 minute projects for you. So let's get started. I'm gonna show you how to make fingerless mittens. Now I have a lot of leftover pieces of fleece. So for each hand you just need one eight and a half inch square. So on two opposite edges, you're gonna fold them over one quarter inch and stitch. And again, you do it on opposite edges. Before you stitch these two edges, make sure you're stitching them on the edges that go with the natural stretch of fleece. Now, turn it over to where the front is up and bring the front sides together. And you're gonna take your hand and place one end of the mitten just right about in here on your hand and put a pin right here we're on one side of your thumb and then take another pin and put it on the other side of your thumb and then on this area here you're going to stitch a half inch seam as well as down here one half inch seam on each side of the open area right here you want to fold the seam back like this then you're going to put your presser foot right on top of this and stitch right along there to keep this folded inside. Or you could do a little tack stitch by using a needle and thread. And after you've done stitching around that hole, then just turn them front side out and there you go, fingerless mittens. Now I'm gonna show you how to make a really easy scrunchie. So you'll need a piece of fabric that is three and a half by 20 inches. And you also need an eight inch long piece of elastic. On your two longest edges, fold the edges over one quarter inch and press it the full length. Then take your elastic and at each end of the strip of fabric, place the elastic in the center about one quarter inch from the edge and just do a little tack stitch. Then go to the other end and stitch the other end down in the same way. Now fold it in half, bring the edges that have been pressed over and folded together on bringing back sides together to where the front side of the fabric shows and you can pin it together if you like and then stitch close to the edge all the way down to the other end. At one end turn the edges in about a quarter of an inch then take the other end and insert it inside of the end that's folded under. And after you've brought those two ends together, then go ahead and stitch right across there to hold it all together. And there you have a scrunchie. So now here is a bookmark that's really easy and doesn't take long at all. And you just need really small pieces of fabric for this. You'll need one piece that's in here in the center, four and a half by five inches. And then these two outer pieces are two and a half by five inches. You'll also need a piece of iron-on fusible interfacing that's two inches wide by eight inches long. An optional ribbon you can use, I would recommend, up to three. They're five inches long and they are quarter inch wide ribbon. Take your two smaller pieces of fabric and bring them on each end of the larger piece of fabric and front sides together and stitch a quarter of an inch seam along here. Then press your seam on the back, then unfold and press it on top. And I've pressed my seams going away from this center piece. Fuse the interfacing on the back side of your fabric and the shiny side is where the glue is. Find your, uh, read your package instructions for how to fuse it on, it's really simple. Then you want to place it on one side of the back of the fabric, a quarter inch away from this end and this end, and a quarter inch away 
from this edge over here. Then fold the edges over all the way around one quarter inch and press. Now fold it in half and pin your edges together. Then take your uh, three ribbons and arrange them any way you like. I recommend you fold them in half like this so that they sort of fan out a little bit. And then insert it at one end and I would put a pin to, uh, to hold it there in place and then stitch across this end. Then after stitching across up here, then go ahead and stitch down the other two edges. Now if you're worried about the ends of your ribbon fraying, and they will, you can use a product by Dritz. It's called Fray Check. Just follow package instructions for putting this glue on the ends. And when you're done, you have this really pretty little uh, bookmark. Very easy, very quick to make. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to make a four patch pin cushion. So you need four squares that are three and a half inch square and you want two, two dark and two light and you'll also need some polyfill stuffing. You're going to stitch a dark and a light square together. So bring front sides together and stitch one quarter inch seam. Press your seams on the back side and then unfold and press on top and you're going to push the seam towards your darkest fabric. Then you're going to swap one of them. Turn it around like this to where you have opposite colors. Then bring front sides together and match that seam up in the center so you want to make sure the seam on one side is going in the opposite direction than the seam on the underside. Then stitch a quarter inch seam on three sides so you'll stitch here, along here, and here. Now grab the two seams in the middle and pull it apart and you're going to bring the other two unstitched edges together, but just bring one side up together and go ahead and pin it and just stitch from the side seam to the center seam and then stop. So now it should look like this. So you've got it stitched across one side of the opening and you want this left open. So then go ahead and turn it front side out. So when you turn it front side out, it's going to look something like this, all right? Now take your polyfill stuffing and break it up into small pieces. And you're going to need quite a lot. You'd be surprised how much will go inside of this little pincushion. And begin to insert it inside. Now as you're stuffing, go to your corners first, fill those in, and then fill the rest of the pincushion in. To close the opening, turn your edges inside one quarter inch and you have two different stitches you can do. You can do a whip stitch where you just whip the needle and thread back and forth. Now that stitch will show. Or you can do a ladder stitch which is a hidden stitch. So when I pull on the thread, it pulls the two sides together and you can't see the stitch. If you don't know how to do a ladder stitch, then check for the link below your YouTube screen. If you're doing the whip stitch, which can be seen, you want to make sure that you turn that as your bottom side of the pin cushion. You can leave it like this and it still would make a great pin cushion. Or if you want to give it a, just a little more personality, you can add a little button in there. Now when you're putting a button on, I advise you use a long needle like this and that you would also need to insert the needle all the way to the bottom and back up again through the button. And you want to go through it three or four times. And then you have just a really cute little pin cushion. 
I'm gonna show you how to make a really easy drink coaster. You can use any theme of fabric. They can be each a different color on the top and bottom or the same color. Cut your squares, two of them, five inches square, and then you'll need one piece of cotton batting that is also five inches square. Bring your fabric's front sides together and then place it over your cotton batting. Then go ahead and stitch on all four sides except you're going to leave a small opening that you do not stitch over. So when you're stitching you want to back stitch on each side of your opening and do a one quarter inch seam around the edges. Before turning it front side out, I recommend you cut some of the fabric off around the corners. You want to cut it down to about an eighth of an inch wide of fabric around that stitch line. Be careful you don't cut in to your stitches. I like to cut a little bit off on each side of the corner. Now turn it front side out. Reach in between your two uh, pieces of fabric and begin pushing it front side out. Now take something that's got a, a little bit of a point on it, not too sharp because you don't want to stab right through your fabric. And the reason for this is to go in and poke those corners out. Remember don't poke too hard because you don't want to mess up your seam or poke through your fabric. Then after you've done that, you want to turn these edges in at the opening in one quarter inch. I recommend that you put a couple of pins there to hold it closed and then stitch real close to the edge all the way around. I recommend you just do one more thing on these little coasters because you are going to wash them, they're going to get dirty, and you want to be able to keep the fabric layers together because of the cotton batting inside. So I recommend you just do two more rows of stitching and that's from corner to corner. I hope you enjoyed this video and I do hope you try making some of these projects. It's a great way to get rid of those scraps and they make wonderful gifts. So if you are interested in other simple quick projects to do, check below your YouTube screen for those video links. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thanks for watching and happy sewing! I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on the thumbs up button. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Click on the bell so you can receive notifications about my latest videos. I'm Cheryl and this is Scotty and this is Manny. See you next time and happy sewing!